You're watching Election Express with Rahul Kaval, broadcasting live from Chennai tonight. Welcome and welcome on board the Election Express. We are broadcasting tonight from the Loyola College in Chennai, one of the most prestigious institutes of higher learning in the country. This is day 17 of the Election Express. And I want to begin by thanking all our guests who've joined us in Chennai on the Election Express. Thank you all so much. It's really a pleasure having all of you with us. The Election Express has been traveling through the country, starting from Delhi. We've now made our way down to Chennai. And it's great to be here. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. I want to begin by asking the one question that's been asked most often over the last 17 days. And that question pertains to the so-called Narendra Modi way, wherever we've traveled, especially in the north, in Uttar Pradesh, in Gujarat, in some parts of Maharashtra, there's been a very pronounced Narendra Modi wave. So I want to ask first whether the people sitting here in this audience in Chennai tonight think that there is a Narendra Modi wave in Chennai or in Tamil Nadu also. How many people agree that there is a Narendra Modi wave in Chennai? Okay, this is possibly the fewest hands that I've seen raised on this question anywhere in the country but, but, but still about one-fifth of the people sitting here believe that there is a Narendra Modi wave so to those who said that there is a Modi wave if I begin with you why do you believe that there is a Modi wave given the fact that the BJP in Tamil Nadu has traditionally been a very weak party no I disagree with you because BJP has formed a formidable alliance in Tamil Nadu and uh, for over 40 years uh, DMK and ADMK they are ruling and ruin this uh, state so people wanted a change now BJP has formed this grand alliance so people uh, will definitely vote for BJP and uh, of course from Kashmir to Kanyakumari we can feel Narendra Modi's wave Th this wave is also you can feel in Tamil Nadu you're saying from Kashmir to Kanyakumari there is a Modi wave do you agree sir? sir this is Shah Rukh Khan movie Chennai Express but now we are into headlines today Election Express. Yes. So there is no Modi wave. We have got a longest Marina Beach. Daily there is waves coming and going. And we have got Mahabalipuram. Lot of caves are there where we can put Modi inside. But there is no Modi wave. From since 1967, after Congress rule, after our great leader Kamraj, the DMK and ADMK were ruling the state. And the people of Tamil Nadu were not given the chance to vote for Congress. It is only the Rahul Gandhi wave in Tamil Nadu and definitely, definitely, definitely it's 40, 40, see, 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 see actually, act, actually, I'll tell, actually, I'll tell you, actually, I'll tell you, because why he means 40 seats, nobody has the guts. See, Rahul Gandhi is not going in means Rajni Gant, Vijay Gant, Nalini Gant, Suri Gant, all these Gants are not going to help us. We believe with the people of Tamil Nadu and we want Kamaraj rule in Tamil Nadu under the dynamic leadership of young leader Rahul Gandhi. We will form an alliance in the center and we will rule this country for okay. third This gentleman very bravely announces there's a Rahul Gandhi wave. Does the rest of our audience agree that there's a Rahul Gandhi wave? Nobody agrees. He seems to be in a minority of one. You also seem to believe that there is a Modi wave. Why do you feel that way? He is the only person who can deliver for India. He would be the only person who has performed for the last 10 years in Gujarat. He has given jobs. He has done a great job for India. He has placed India in the world map on productivity, on better development. Nobody else has been able to do this. And as far as Rahul Gandhi wave, instead of meeting Rajni Kant, he has gone and he is searching for Chota Beam. He's searching for Chota Beam. You say you disagree with what the gentleman is saying on the yeah, Modi wave? To totally, I disagree because he should be more specific. When he points out the progress, you know, approach of Gujarat, he should be more specific. Not only for Adani, when, where Modi's progress is all about Adani's, you know, revenue making and it is not about a general opinion. I'll give him some. Yeah, the 10 years of development of so-called Modi wave is a myth. Because when you compare it with Tamil Nadu, Tamil Nadu is a far more better rate. If you take Human Development Index, Tamil Nadu is number 3. See where Gujarat is. If you see the infant mortality rate, Tamil Nadu is 21. Gujarat is 98 per thousand live births. If you talk about maternal mortality rate, Tamil Nadu health indices are much more better. If you take the poverty rate, Tamil Nadu is much more better than the BJP Gujarat model. So if you take Gujarat model in Tamil Nadu, you are pushing Tamil Nadu to a backward state rather than a forward state. You, th you think that Tamil Nadu is doing better? Yes, sir. What do you think about the Modi way? Sir, actually, honestly speaking, Congress and BJP still, you know, saying lies to everyone. Uh, 
if you frankly speaking it is a aam aadmi way to everywhere in india you think there is an aam aadmi party wave in tamil nadu not only tamil nadu throughout the india honestly speaking so you you touch your heart and tell me everyone it is a aam aadmi way and it is aam aadmi way and every go on every street corner the broom symbols we are showing everyone is understanding aam aadmi party how many people think that the aam aadmi party will have an impact in tamil nadu how many people think okay there are lots of hands over there who believe all of them are wearing the aam aadmi party topi is that is that representative of how many aam aadmi party supporters there are or all the supporters have come to the show tonight <laughs> today myself one of my friends we had been to door to door campaign just evening so there i can just see the enthusiasm from the public that aam aadmi party is the only party to eradicate corruption for that only we have just selected the broom stick that is the only party and we are contesting 430 seats on our own but other two national parties are contesting with alliance so this is the only party within a one and a half years we have grown larger and aam aadmi party is just brighter 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 okay we'll talk about all the political players and the chances they have in this election uh, but we've seen the response from those gathered in our audience here at the loyola college about the question of whether there is a modi wave in tamil nadu in fact have people at all across tamil nadu heard of who narendra modi is so we sent our colleague simi pasha out and about on the streets of chennai to ask people fishermen taxi drivers common folk on whether they knew who modi wo was and whether they believed that there indeed was a narendra modi wave here's what the election express found out the seat of power in tamil nadu chennai is considered to be the birthplace of several regional political movements A city that takes tremendous pride in its language, history and culture, Chennai has spearheaded the battle for Tamil prominence. It is this assertion of its regional identity that makes it difficult for national parties to cut ties in a region where Dravidian parties reign supreme. And this is the biggest challenge for Narendra Modi this election. Bharat Mata ki jai. The BJP may boast of a Modi wave across the country. some of it may ring true in the hindi heartland but the battle for chennai is a different ball game we hit the streets of pattinam bakam a fisherman colony near the city's marina beach to try and tap into the political pulse of this powerful wood bank zindagi abhi women manage stalls selling exotic fish as the men venture out to the seas in search of a good catch we faced with a language barrier but we find help Uh, I want to ask them if they know Narendra Modi. How do I say that in Tamil? Ungal Narendra Modi theri ma. Narendra Modi theri ma. Narendra Modi theri ma. Narendra Modi theri ma. Theri ma. Theri ma. It me theri ma. Theri ma. Theri ma. Whether you know I know him or not. Narendra Modi theri ma. Narendra Modi theri ma. Jante Modi ka naam suna hai? Nahi suna. They know Kalengar. Kalengar. Kalengar is Karuna Nidhi. And Baiko. 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 M D M K. M D M K. And Swanthi K. Kanta. Ah, Jai Darsha. Bodi, idhar nahi aayega. Nahi aayega. Baar se aayega. Idhar nahi nahi aayega. Just Jai Darsha and Karuna Nidhi. But Narendra Modi only in Gujarat. He is coming to India. Not Next coming. Thing, no. Not coming. Ah, na. No. Tamil Nadu. No. We leave the fish stalls and move towards beach where dozens of colorful boats are lined up waiting to hit the waves. The fishermen are busy. It's almost noon and they're rushing to wrap up their day's work. We're at Marina Beach and we have a group of fishermen here. We've also got our friend Siraj bhai who help us communicate with them. Uh Siraj bhai se puchiye Narendra Modi ko jante hain? Narendra Modi teri maa? Ha teri. Uh big leader kaun hai yahan ka? Jai Lalita. Jai Lalita. Karan hai. Karan hai the. Stalin. Even as the fisherman community owes allegiance to regional giants, we get mixed reactions from students at Madras University. It's exam season, 
not just for these youngsters but also for their political icons. Na nova nova am preferring for Nota. Leaders in Chennai selections. Mr. Kanna ji. Kanna ji. Yeah. Who who will you be voting for? Jayalalitha. Rajini not support anyone. Rajini doesn't yeah. support anyone. No. He's idol. Huh? He's idol. He's, He's not depending on him. Our next stop is Mailapur, a quiet neighborhood known for its predominant Tamil Brahmin population. Seen traditionally as AIADMK loyalists, the Tam Brahms account for 6% of the state's vote share. Sidelined by the Dravidian giants who have rolled out a massive 69% reservation for OBCs and SCSTs, this community is demanding change. I think they are looking for a change. Once upon a time they were maybe looking at AIADMK, but now since there's alternatives there, they may going for a bjp the reservations is probably another irritation um, however the community is more of middle class as well so, so large population is middle class uh, so reservations causes a big issues for them in terms of uh, universities jobs tamil nadu predominantly i would say has been two party primarily now i think it's time people look out say more from a national perspective it's time they give modi a chance that i would say or who is going to be from a national perspective candidate Even as the Tamrams root for Modi, the powerful trader community disagrees. They claim the BJP's presence in Tamil Nadu is negligible. Modi is a brave man, but not in but Tamil Nadu. Not in no, no. Here only uh, ADMK and DMK and Congress. But now some people uh, says Modi, Modi, Modi. here media uh, candidate but the media's candidate hey 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 up eh? as we get ready to pack up we come across a group of silver haired gentlemen sitting on the pavement they tell us they're all retired government employees who like to spend their evenings together chit chatting about current issues and the flavor of the season is elections who the biggest leader of tamil nadu this election <laughs> No Jayalalitha. I don't Jayalalitha. <laughs> there is two waves. Only Jayalalitha and Karunanidhi. There is there a Modi wave here? Does anyone know Modi? Oh, English. Okay. Karunanidhi. 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 Even as the BJP claims that the appeal of its Prime Minister, Al Candidate Narendra Modi, surpasses all barriers of caste, culture, and region, here in Tamil Nadu, Modi is not a force to reckon with. At least, not as yet. As temple architecture and the flavour of local cuisine changes dramatically south of the Vindhyas, so does the politics. So it's Talewar and Amma who will be clashing for supremacy in Tamil Nadu, not Modi and Rahul. In Chennai, with Kasi Siddiqui. Simi Pasha for the Election Express. Well, it's interesting how the responses on the questions of whether there is a Modi wave in Tamil Nadu very different from elsewhere in the country. I want to come to the next part of the Election Express broadcast tonight. How many people here think Jayalalitha made a mistake by not allying with Modi? That before the elections she should have announced an alliance with Modi. You think so? You think, sir, she made a mistake? Why do you think that Jayalalitha erred by not allying with Modi? personally both of them are great friends which means they have great chemistry i think she was uh, how do we know when she when he comes to town she doesn't even meet him uh, she attended his inauguration he attended her inauguration they personally very good friends they have chemistry but the fact of the matter is i think the communist party misguided them saying that you know she will lose the minority votes so this afternoon when she was doing a rally right here in chennai she attacked Uh, Narendra Modi she said which is better the Gujarat model or the Tamil Nadu model if they are such great friends she wouldn't be attacking him actually the Gujarat model is far better i'd like to go back to the statistics that that gentleman quoted you look at things like 24 by hour, uh, 24 by 7 power supply agricultural growth rate the state of the sabarmati river has got a beautiful water front as compared to the kuom at one point it was dirtier than the kuom uh, the ratio of administrative expense to gdp which is uh, which is an indicator of governance and as modi says minimum government maximum governance and why do you think jayalalitha made a mistake uh, i think she wanted to get 40 seats and the communist told her that if you get 40 seats you would be a uh, prime minister in a third front government uh, i think it was misguidance on their part okay. she could have got 40 seats in how many people think that she did the right thing so do you believe that jayalalitha did the right thing 
I believe she did because if she did not announce who she is, if that she doesn't support Narendra Modi, I know many voters who are supporting Jay Lalita because they don't want Modi to come to power. No, but a lot of people also think that there is a proxy game taking place that after the election she will support Modi. We can leave that to speculation, but we can only trust her based on what she says. How many people think that there is a fixed match between Jay Lalita and Modi? Just look at the number of hands that are going up. You believe, sir, that there is a fixed match as well? Why do you feel that there is a fixed match? See, Jay Lalita and Modi, it is the people of Tamil Nadu know it is the devil in the deep sea. So they will not vote for both of them. They will vote for a good governance, which is definitely a stable government in the national level. How many people think there is a fixed match? Who else thinks there is a fixed match? You think there is a fixed match, sir? Why do you feel there is a fixed match? Actually, the purpose of uh, Jalilita to be in, in this, uh, this after after election, she will be go, going support with this BJP. So that is the main purpose because she will be losing the minority votes. That is the one purpose. She is not uh, aligning with the Modi pre-election. So is that the sense everyone else has as well? That this is actually a fixed match. She is worried about the Muslim voters in Tamil Nadu, which is why she didn't ally with Modi before the election. No, in the, on the contrary, if the ground level uh, facts are to be believed, she has lost uh, OBC votes to the BJP. The BJP has gained, whether it is 2% to 10% or 20%, definitely minorities have not shifted. It is the OBC votes that uh, she is losing. That's why now today the war is between Jalilta and Modi, because Modi or the NDA has taken the second place, though not the poll place. So that's, that's the position at this point in time. Okay. How many other people over here feel that Jailalitha has done the right thing. Yes, madam, what do you, what do you think? Uh, in the, the, the conspiracy I want to talk about. You think there is a conspiracy between Jailalitha and Modi? What is See, he, both of them have a similar goal and they are power mongers. And they try their maximum in their individual manner. But there is a win-win and lose-lose. It's like, you know, either you or me, it's the same. So it's a, it's a game played uh, before the election. And it's going to be either one and they are going to align together. You think that they will ally also? Who else believes that there is an alliance? Who thinks that there isn't going to be an alliance? Yes, sir. See, in politics, there is nobody you can call as a friend or an enemy permanently. These friendships keep changing and the enemies are also keep changing. But the, here, Jayalata, by not joining with BJP, she has got an option now. So by chance, if there is a formation of third friend, she can even join the third friend, saying that I already said that I am against Modi. By any chance, if BJP comes to power and if they need a Jalta support, still she can always say that I am a friend of Modi always. So she keeps her options open by not joining. So she's flirting with both the third friend and with Narendra Modi. Okay, so you are from the BJP. Everyone here in Chennai convinced that there is a fixed match between Jayalalitha and Modi. No, I disagree with that because uh, from the beginning, BJP Tamil Nadu wanted to form a non-DMK, non-ADMK front. In that, we have succeeded in forming a formidable alliance under BJP. A alliance where the partners don't get along, they fight with each other, they hate each other. On every topic, they disagree with each other. No, 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 no. We need not uh, have same uh, ideology, but uh, our main uh, focus is to defeat this Congress and ADMK uh, party. So, we have formed that formidable alliance and uh, I hope... Uh, we will succeed. Okay. What's the view within the DMK on the rift with Aragiri? Aragiri sulking, suspended, threatening to walk out but saying that he will stay a DMK member till his last day. Will Aragiri's unhappiness towards Talon's ascension have any impact at all on the DMK's fortunes? Priyamvada files this story for the Election Express. The DMK Patriarch has announced that this will be his last election. The sun is set to rise in one of Tamil Nadu's oldest parties. But having expelled his elder son, Aragiri, from the party for indiscipline, Karuna Nadi has anointed Stalin as his heir. Stalin himself is not shying away from targeting his elder brother. The brothers have been at war since the time Karuna Nadi chose Stalin as his successor to lead the party. The family feud climaxed in January this year with Aragiri's suspension from the party. Soon after, the DMK's Madurai unit, controlled by Aragiri, was disbanded, making his isolation complete. Four days after MK Aragiri was suspended from the DMK, his father justified the action, saying he could no longer tolerate his son's anti-party activities. Aragiri returned fire by declaring that Stalin would die in the next three months. And he was finally expelled on the 25th of March.
He had worked his way up in the party. He had suffered during the emergency when he was beaten up, arrested and beaten up in the Misa. Uh, and uh, so he's worked his way and he's an organization man. So I don't think there can be any objection uh, in, in terms of di you know dynastic uh, pol politics objections to Stalin. But if there are... But Alagiri would be a different kind of case. He may also worked hard, but then he came in to take the shortcut. The 2014 Lok Sabha polls are like a semi-final battle for M.K. Stalin in his race to head the DMK. The Dalapati, which means commander as he is called by his party men, is likely to be declared leader of the DMK in 2016. But ousted son Aragiri has tremendous influence in seven Lok Sabha constituencies in Tamil Nadu, including a strong support base in Madurai. As a political force, he is actively being wooed by both the Congress and the BJP. See, in the whole South, he has got good clout because nearly 50% of DMK volunteers owe their allegiance to him. He was the zonal secretary of this area. The person who is falling apart from the party, he is holding on to the father. That is his anchor. So uh, if he falls, perhaps you know, he has to pull his father down as well. Whether or not Aragiri ties up with the Congress or the BJP, one thing is for sure. The blood feud between Karunanadi's sons will cost the DMK dear. Bureau report for Election Express. A clear fight between the two brothers. So you represent the DMK. Do you think that this fight will cost the DMK dear in this election? No, it will not. Uh, because uh, all the party party members, uh, they have uh, sided with uh, M.K. Stalin. He is the clear leader. He has been identified as the next leader and he is doing a good job. So there is no dent. How many people believe that Aragiri being unhappy with uh, the DMK and with Stalin will impact the DMK's fortunes? You feel that there will be an impact? What do you think the impact will be? And definitely, you know, um, the people who are hardcore supporters of uh, DMK were actually, you know, uh, totally out of mind. They are saying this, you know, these two brothers are fighting and this is not the first time they are fighting. Every time they fight and after sometimes they join together, it's because of them that we, we can't take a side. And, uh, you know, totally the, there is a moral, um, you know, downfall of the DMK supporters, even who are hardcore uh, ideological supporters of DMK. And there will be impact on uh, uh, DMK's votes due to this. You think that there will be an impact? There's also a lot of buzz that the DMK has recovered ground recently. That unlike at the start of the elections, the DMK is doing much better. Do you share that perception, sir, that DMK is doing better now than uh, uh, earlier Jayalalitha might have thought? Yeah, maybe. As far as the first course is concerned, down south, yeah, there will be some damages for DMK, definitely due to the allegory impact. As far as advantage for DMK in this election, yeah, there might be whatever gains they make will be mainly because of the fight between BJP and ADMK and that's where they are going, they are going to get some gains. Do you think they will gain because of the fight between the DMK and the BJP? Sir, do you think that there will be an impact uh, because Aragiri has walked out? See, I don't want to talk about all this local politics. Yes. I am fully focused on PM's chair and this uh, our India is already a peninsula. It is like a sinking ship and it should be well saved and that is the only person with whom we can interest ourselves is only Modi and no other person I fully give full confidence and and here in our state there is no word to utter as um, this secularism and other things no, and no, Tamil, but, Tamilism. But, yes. but Modi is not strong in Tamil Nadu. That is the reality of Tamil Nadu. Oh, in inner hearts of everybody, we have that sense. This is not our state. This is not our state politics. It is our center politics. You think for the center, Modi is still very strong? Yes, sir. You're right, Rahul. The BJP is not strong, but the NDA is getting votes because of the Modi wave. That's not because of PMK, MDMK, DMDK. Also, also but. In spite of a weak party, uh, BJP and Modi are going to get votes and this lady spoke from her heart. Okay. And one, one, another point you've got to consider which, uh, which you're bringing about. Whenever there's been a multi-cornered contest in Tamil Nadu, the DMK has gained. So my feeling is the DMK will get a lot more seats than people give credit for. Okay, I want to speak to some of the younger people in our audience. How do you perceive Narendra Modi as an administrator in comparison with Jailalit? Narendra Modi, needless to say, is a fantastic administrator. I mean, on all fronts, he's proved it well beyond doubt. The problem here is Jayalata has got our national ambitions, which is overriding the national interest here. 
which is the fact so if she were to align with nda purely for arithmetic reason she could be pocketing anything between 32 and 34 seats but that's not the case to be what she is doing is she's she's going alone and she could be i mean possibly po pocketing anything between 22 to 24 thereby losing about 10 seats so here because of this rift is a reason why dmk is also gaining power here in tamil nadu so they, this rift is going to prove very costly for jayalalitha and tomorrow if we were to i mean until last week i was thinking probably if i were to vote for jayalalitha she could be aligning with nda but the last week she is making making it increasingly uh, open and uh, clear that she doesn't want to align so that case it's very it's very very obvious that most of us would be voting for modi and not for jayalalitha yeah, yeah what do you think sir see i, I voice his opinion too uh, the thing is uh, uh, we clearly even though there is not a bjp wave there is definitely a modi wave here in uh, chennai and in tamil nadu that gentleman said there's only a marina beach wave there's no modi wave no no that is clear see you can you can take the voice of the majority i, I don't uh, have this uh, uh, opinion for myself but i i was the public opinion okay. uh while well, i feel there's a tsunami in india and a wave in chennai that's what i feel about modi yeah. no, no no but tsunamis are very destructive tsunamis are also very dangerous we've seen tsunamis here especially in tamil nadu Uh, we don't want a tsunami tsunami is a very very dangerous and i want to go across into the launch because you've got a rajnikanth look alike over here sir you know if you can I, and I, we also have an mgr look alike sir ye batai aap elections ko follow kar rahe hain nahi follow kar rahe election mein bola to delhi mein udhar narendra modi baitha to ye tamil nadu mein amma udhar alliance hoega tamil nadu ka acha janam amma ne pehle kyun nahi alliance kiya phir nahi nahi bolo to acha friendly le friendly fight तो अच्छा फ्रेंड्स है कभी भी वो लोग आ नहीं सकता तो प्रोटोकॉल में किसा भी हो नहीं सकता बोल नहीं सकता तमिलनाडु में नहीं तो पहले करना चाहिए था ना अलायंस बात के लिए कहीं कुछ छोड़ा बात तो आने ये तो बोलने में बोल नहीं सकते एम जी आर होता तो क्या करता मोदी से अलायंस करता नहीं करता एम जी आर रहता तो एम को कौन कौन पसंद आता है उससे करते हैं कौन इंडिया में कौन अच्छा प्रदमर आएगा उसको एम सपोर्ट करें आपके हिसाब से कौन अच्छा पी एम बन सकते मोदी तो नरेंद्र मोदी हो सकते अच्छा पी हो सकता है हमारे साथ रजनीकांत भी हैं वी हैव रजनीकांत लुक लाइक सर वाई डोंट यू फर्स्ट टू अस सम ऑफ यू एंटिक्स विच आर सो फेमस ओवर यर Okay, thank you, Mr. Rajnikanth. Look like I want to understand from people over here why is Narendra Modi wooing Rajnikanth? See, first he wooed Jai Lalita, he failed over there. Now he's wooing Rajnikanth. He doesn't seem to be succeeding over there. He thought Rajnikanth will come and do some V sign. He did nothing. Do you think he's failing in both his attempts? No, it is not question of wooing. Narendra Modi already uh, uh, has said that uh, Rajnikanth is his friend. so whenever he comes no, but rajnikanth hasn't said go out vote for modi many times many times uh, whenever uh, narendra modi visit chennai used to talk to rajnikanth goes to his home it's not a good a new thing so nothing do you think rajnikanth coming out publicly hugging narendra modi will make any difference sir no i don't think it will make any difference because he has a bit of experience in 2004 uh, when rajnikanth openly supported bjp uh, it uh, had a catastrophic failure so i don't think he will do the mistake again that's why he refrained from endorsing modi okay do you think rajnikanth can make a difference ma'am what's your sense yes of course i have witnessed once in one of the press meet rajnikanth has said very clearly that he only modi has got the leadership he is my a very good friend and he has he is the only person who is fit to be but in this man. election rajnikanth has said not not said go vote for modi um, months back i was there too because i am the person who sits in front of the tv almost all the time and especially i hope you are watching election express i am the greatest fan of yours that's very sweet of you thank you very much election express actually has created the mindset how to go and vote for even the elites have got the mindset now 
clear myself to to who to vote for that's a very nice comment from a can we have a round of applause sir please thank you so much yes do you think rajnikanth can impact voting decisions over here his virtual endorsement of modi no first i would like to comment on why that could have happened now see if you let's say you meet rajnikanth now you take a picture with him would you put it in your office or no you obviously would so basically it could have been an attempt to just create an image now as you said he didn't endorse anything rajnikanth so narendra modi went met him he took a picture he sorry he took a picture and he posted on twitter did rajnikanth do anything no so if tomorrow rahul gandhi goes to his house is he going to say no i'm not going to post for a picture with you no he's a celebrity if i wanted to take a picture i'm going to take a picture to increase my image now if i get a picture with Ra- with rajnikanth it's going to be a, my facebook dp the next second right so basically it could have been an attempt to increase his image okay do you agree with that that narendra modi makes it seem as if uh, rajnikanth is voting for him or supporting him but uh, that's not the case yes uh, in fact uh, what my brother said is right you know he came here to take a sympathy of all tamilian like uh, rajnikanth fans to vote uh, narendra modi that that is not uh, clear what do you think sir do you think rajnikanth can impact voting decisions over here definitely he could that is what i feel because if rajnikanth tells you to vote for narendra modi will that change your mind no i would by myself be voting for narendra modi that's a different question but still narendra modi uh, narendra modi meeting rajnikanth will definitely carry a significance otherwise why would you be coming and asking me whether it would carry any significance and rajnikanth is a re- respectable person here he carries some weight yes, there are some critics of rajnikanth who say that now he is too old that unlike earlier when he could impact elections in 1996 he did but now he can't. yeah i think uh, there was a time where rajini could make a big difference now we don't think so and one more thing i just want to ta- talk to the people about it is the modi wave see i'll tell you past 10 years of election the anti incumbency has created a big wave in this country it might be modi or any xyz the same wave would have been created and other thing is i am surprised to see lot of people nobody stepped in yeah. to fill that vacuum yeah that that might be time is the answer for it and see i am surprised to see lot of people now politics have changed like an advertising company modi has been well advertised so the product of modi has been sold well that is the only thing i don't think jailalitha also advertises well across chennai there are big holdings of jailalitha no jailalitha doesn't do the ads nationally and this is a very well equipped advertisement company the politics have become like an advertising corporate that's how modi is taking it in forward do you think modi is more market thing then and uh, i want to tell one thing if there is already a modi wave then why should modi meet rajnikanth yeah. in tamil nadu there is no modi wave in tamil nadu there is no modi wave one, one more see i'll tell you one thing in tamil nadu if you see the uh, bjp and their allies i will lose fingers out to count it <laughs> okay uh we've discussed rajnikanth we've discussed jailalitha we've discussed narendra modi i want to focus on one of the important issues of the tamil nadu election the fisherman issue uh the fact that all parties just before election start claiming that they are the best placed to solve the issue the election express bus travel to the fisherman villages of the coast of tamil nadu to understand how people in those villages most impacted by a change in government hoping that a new government comes in and helps them deal with their problems that have been going on for years now what do people in those villages feel about the battle for your vote 2014 here's a report a small island 14 nautical miles from rameshwaram has been the cause of many deaths arrests and diplomatic hiccups between india and sri lanka so it is but natural that in this part of the country it is a major political issue during general elections madam amma pe aarop laga di hai amma madam pe aarop laga di hai aur mar kon raha hai vishal mein mar raha hai it is only due to our efforts that fishermen of both the countries of tamil nadu and of, of, of sri lanka were able to meet in january this year terdal vandavudan meenavargalukkaga neeli kanneer vadikkirar tirumadi sonia gandhi this area is very rich in fish so indian fishermen come here 
and also the Sri Lankan fishermen who are living in the Kalemanna region on the other side, they also tend to come closer to this place. The Sri Lankan Navy, we are trying to see the watchtower which is little away from there. That's where the watchtower is there, from where all the activities are noted. Uh, Indian Navy and Coast Guard vessels are also on continuous patrolling. It's a regular feature here that fishermen stray on to Kachathivu and are arrested by Lankan patrols. The crew is sent to jail and the boats and fish confiscated. It takes months of diplomatic efforts to secure the release of Indian fishermen, but on the ground agitation and anger simmers. <laughs> Yelangai Tamil orang perancis yang karena mana kerja, pora tanah itu arsil panik itu kanga ramah arsil kecil label kecil bora. Aku ngada ada nanti nanti aku ngada kacchin nanti mudik orang nelayan nelayan kacchin nanti kita kanga. Ini orang ini pas ini pun mulai orang orang kerja. Ini orang ini pas ini pun mulai orang orang kerja. Ini orang ini pas ini pun mulai orang orang kerja. Ini orang ini pas ini pun mulai orang orang kerja. Ini orang ini pas ini pun mulai orang orang kerja. Ini orang ini pas ini pun mulai orang orang kerja. Ini orang ini pas ini pun mulai orang orang kerja. Ini orang ini pas ini pun mulai orang orang kerja. Ini orang ini pas ini pun mulai orang orang kerja. Ini orang ini pas ini pun mulai orang orang kerja. Ini orang ini pas ini pun mulai orang orang kerja. Ini orang ini pas ini pun mulai orang orang kerja. Ini orang ini pas ini pun mulai orang orang kerja. Ini orang ini pas ini pun mulai orang orang kerja. Ini orang ini pas ini pun mulai orang orang kerja. Ini orang ini pas ini pun mulai orang orang kerja. Ini orang ini pas ini pun mulai orang orang kerja. Ini orang ini pas ini pun mulai orang orang kerja. Ini orang ini pas ini pun mulai orang orang kerja. Ini orang ini pas ini pun mulai orang orang kerja. Ini orang ini pas ini pun mulai orang orang kerja. Ini orang after talks in January, Lanka released 116 Indian fishermen in March. The release was intended to ease the next round of talks, but Chief Minister Jayalalitha said that Tamil Nadu would not be party to it unless all 177 Tamil fishermen and their 44 boats held in Sri Lanka were released. Playing the emotive issue of recurring attacks on fishermen, Narendra Modi pushed his candidature for the Prime Ministership of India. At a rally last week, Modi said that he would do everything for the welfare of Tamil Nadu fishermen and will protect them from attacks by the Sri Lankan Navy. The fishermen's problem has certainly become an election issue and with nine Lok Sabha constituencies impacted, no one wants to let the opportunity pass off, showing solidarity with the fisherfolk voters of Rameshwaram. With politicians trying to fish in the troubled waters, fisherfolk in the state are looking for a change but are also disillusioned with the politicians. Fishermen feel that only an objective look into this issue could bring relief to the problem that involves their livelihood. With camera person Daniel, this is Priyambada in Rameshwaram for headlines today. Very serious issue often ignored by the political parties or they make the right noises but don't do very much about it. I want to ask our audience here which party is best placed to deal with the fisherman issue. What our correspondents found out is everyone makes the right noises but they don't do anything about it. That's right, everybody makes the right noises but they don't do anything about it. See, the thing is, is so far 600 fishermen were shot and 3000 fishermen were seriously injured. And every time uh, every party comes to power, they make statements that they will do something about the fisherman issue and they will resolve the Sri Lankan Tamil issue. But nothing concrete has happened so far. See, uh, this uh, th uh, Tamilian fisherman issue has has, uh, is one of the rallying points in uh, Tamil Nadu. Why people say Congress will lose this election in Tamil Nadu? It is just because Congress betrayed the Tamilian and Tamil the fishermen in this uh, no, over the last 10 years. DMK was part of that uh, betrayal. Th that is the reason why people are very, you know, uh, hating DMK also. And DMK was forced to come out of the AP. No, but now the DMK has come away. But the reality is, while you could enjoy power, you enjoyed the benefits of power. No, no, no. Consistently, when it, when it comes to the Sri Lankan issue, we have been consistently, you know, insisting right. that they should uh, take, uh, you know, a tough stance against the Sri Lanka. If you look at it, the uh, last year, when it was against the voting in the UN resolution, India did vote you know, against Sri Lanka in the UN resolution, that is because of the DMK's party. No, but did the DMK do enough, madam, do you think, to put pressure on the government? The whole problem is, all these parties only think of the Sri Lankans in Tamil Nadu or about the fishermen's issue during elections. Yeah. And they all make it a uh, pro topic for uh, discussions only to steal the stage, not for anything else. It's stealing the show and not the minds of the people. They really don't care about anyone in the... I come from North Chennai, so during the past 20 days we have been intensively uh, visiting all the uh, coastal areas like right, uh, starting from Ennur, uh, Thiruvathiu right up to Rayapuram and we have met a lot of fishermen people over there. I am really sorry I did not interact with many of the fishermen so long but this time when we saw them it was a very pathetic sight right from their living uh, habitat and their insecure way of life 
and how much they uh, mean how much insecurity they have in their uh, business and during these uh, 20 days of uh, 45 days when they are not supposed to do fishing what is their uh, uh, difficulty of life all these things we were able to gather some information for which we would like to do something for them ma'am do you think all parties basically try and make political capital out of the fisherman issue exactly they are only uh, politicizing it and uh, for their own political gains and i don't think they really want to do anything for the fisherman community or the sri lankan issue because dmk could have done a lot of uh, things in bulldozing the congress but uh, they failed to do it for uh, uh, i mean getting their uh, the gentleman says india changed its voting decision in the un because of dmk pressure do you think that is just a gimmick or do you think the dmk was sincere from the beginning no, actually the particular un voting pattern is the bureaucratic decision not a political decision the indian external affairs bureaucrats have changed the decision this time now coming to the change of policy when the government changes would this external affairs policy of uh, sri lanka will change if bjp comes to power i have very big doubts about it because why do you have doubt yeah because if you see the bjp at the center leadership speaks a different issue and the bjp of a state leadership speaks a different issue if you take mdmk pmk and M and uh, dmdmk they speak about independent tamil nadu but what does bjp stand about independent tamil nadu if you got a referendum resolution being passed in uh, dmk's manifesto as well as admk manifesto what is bjp's central command stand that's a very important question that you are raising the gentleman from the bjp must answer that sir because the mdmk and the pmk uh both have a very different view from the bjp national that's what i was saying it's an alliance of contradictions it's a khichdi alliance no we have our own uh, uh, our own uh, principle on these issues what is your principle do you agree with your allies or not no i'll tell you B so how can they be allies if you don't agree with them? bjp wanted a solution under the sri lankan constitution tamils there should enjoy the same right what uh, the sri lankan uh, people the singalese are enjoying one second the gentleman wants to counter what you are saying I, i want to spell out what the same type of statements are received from congress the same statements you should by central bjp what's the difference on sri lanka tamil between congress and bjp yes that's an important question and you must answer it sir no i am answering actually we are you are going round and round in circles no we are not for the separate tamil elam but uh, the people of no never so time and again we are saying bjp is not for a separate tamil elam but we wanted tamil there in sri lanka should enjoy the same right no, but that's what the congress also says but could do nothing about it sir say now the the real face the mask has been open now as the, the dmk karnanidhi says pune kutti veliye vandathu the cat has come out of the bag now bjp has made it very clear that they will not uh, support any issue related to tamil nadu so it is a bundle of contradictions and everybody has vested interest towards each other and they want somehow modi wants to become prime minister by dividing this country into pieces and creating confusion among the minorities and definitely modi modi is impossible only congress can unite this country you i don't know exactly see the same thing uh, vaiko yeah, exactly what you said is it's the kichri alliance because vaiko uh, bjp sushma swaraj welcome rajapakshe welcome the rajapakshe whereas uh, the same vaiko is now he went and uh, at sanchi he went and uh, what subramaniam swami and vaiko on the same side exactly so it is it's a contradiction bjp bjp's uh, stand on tamil elam is is uh, like the same as like the dmk stand on tamil. no no not in the, dmk has got a different stand dmk has always stood for 1993 last power it lost power in 1993 because of they said they branded it is the dmk who killed raj one second yes see the, the whole reason is because of dravidian uh parties and karnanidhi from the day one he was asking for you know sometimes separate state that is the reason the whole of north india look tamils as betrayers that is the major reason the sufferings for sri lankan tamils dream is the only reason for that okay one second yes sir sir we have been talking for quite a 40 minutes the whole purpose is from 1967 i'm voting you know i find only dmk or admk alternative this now i find there is change a charismatic figure like mr modi people want to change whether it is uh, ruling or something and uh, i think uh, there is you know, the word wave does not root but people want to change with modi moreover first as being a social worker i feel in india that there should be a change in the electoral reforms lot of money is being pumped in 
the poor is being cheated by one party or the other this is what i am more emphasizing no but you are right absolutely but neither the bjp nor the congress are interested in that and that's the misfortune of the indian voter because they want to rule the government they are doing this i want a viable change you know the youngsters are coming up now if I, whether it is any party or something i don't care but as a common citizen okay. i want to change in the political reforms okay we are out of time on this broadcast i want to thank all our guests who have joined us tonight at the loyola college for joining us on the election express thank you so much it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to all of you very erudite very intellectual high quality argument and that's what we really like thank you all so much for joining us on the election express we'll be traveling tonight uh, to tirupati in simandra to the temple town to understand what voters over there feel about the battle for your vote 2014 so tirupati first then towards bangalore we're out on the streets all through this week across Bangalore, south india as we i would like to thank you rahul you made a informed choice for the voters all over india election express has been brilliant you helped us take decision and at last the writing on the wall is modi as pm okay thank you so much all of you for joining us we look forward to seeing you at 9:30 pm tomorrow in the evening as we broadcast live not to rule but to serve the country so that should be understood by we'll find out soon enough who gets to rule who gets to serve thank you all so much for joining us tonight in chennai see you tomorrow in the evening at tirupati